We know that when we communicate with servers and other computers on the internet, those computers can record those communications and they can record lots of different information about them. So when I go to a particular website, I know that that website is recording information about me. Um, any uh, data that I exchange with that website, whether it's unencrypted or encrypted, Clearly, the website has to be able to decipher it and use it. And so I'm exposing myself, I'm exposing personal information, potentially, or whatever things I do on that website to the operator of the website. So websites can track what I do on their particular site. Now, what about the government? What about powerful government agencies, whether it's the US government or governments in other countries? What could they potentially track about my online activities? And so the issue here is that you know, if I'm communicating with this, this server, you know, again, I know that the endpoint, so anytime I communicate with a computer on the internet, I know that the endpoint, I'm revealing information, I'm revealing what I'm doing to the endpoint of the communication. In this case, this is some sort of web server. Let's say this is you know, mail.google.com. Um, so I know that, right? Um, now, the government, though, is a much, much more powerful adversary than we are used to dealing with online. So if there's just you know, some random eavesdropper, let's say on my Wi-Fi network, if I use end-to-end -end encryption, I'm good. If I have to compete with the government, I have a problem. And let me point out some of the reasons why. So the first reason is that the government probably has access to all of these intermediate hops that I'm using. The government could go to a telecom provider, and we have some evidence that this has been done in the past, and they could say, we want information about all the communications that flow across your network. And because of the structure of the internet, because the fact you know, that I'm communicating, you know, as, as I communicate, my communications are crossing all of these different internet service providers, this huge network of networks, any one of these networks that chooses to cooperate with the federal government or with some sort of government has the ability to expose information about my traffic to the government. Okay, so let's say that I'm smart and I'm, I'm doing things using encryption. Okay, um, that's still maybe not sufficient. Um, now, if the government, so the government has a couple of different ways that it can attack encryption and obviously has access to sort of vast uh, Re comp computational resources. So in certain cases, it might just try to po use those to attack weaknesses in various um, security protocols. There's also some suspicion among people who work in security that the government has engineered different back doors or different ways inside of security protocols. So I can, you know, I have some way of breaking a particular protocol that's in wide use so that I can collect information about the participants. In certain cases, if the government is on the communication path, and maybe the government has some control of the certificate authorities I'm using, it may actually be able to uh, launch what's called a man in the middle attack, where it impersonates the site that I'm communicating with, uh, presents what could be considered a valid certificate, and gets me to encrypt data using its certificate so that it can, it can, decre it can decrypt all of the data I'm sending somewhere along the path. But I don't necessarily even have to do that if I'm the government. I can attack your device. I can plant software uh, closer to where you are to track your activity. Um, in some cases, just the pattern of activities between you and particular websites or other people on the internet are enough to expose information about you or about the things that you're doing. Um, so even if I just know who you're communicating with, I may know something about you and that may be enough uh, to, to do more things. The government also, um, there's a much easier strategy here actually for governments to use and that is if the government is interested in reading my email, they don't have to do all this fancy stuff where they attack me somewhere along the internet path. They just go to Google and say, I have a subpoena to read the email of this particular um, customer and Google is you know, in certain cases bound to, to, to comply with those, with those requests. Um, and in certain cases, maybe some internet service providers or maybe some internet uh, companies are actually not just complying with those requests, but maybe in certain cases cooperating voluntarily with government programs that may be uh, a little bit uh, less sort of official, right? Where the government may have a little bit less reason, but want to sort of inspect, you know, uh, data and, and try to learn more about me or, or lots of other people. Um, again, mail. You know, Google clearly has access to the plain text of my mail. There's not really a way around that unless I use out-of-band encryption, which I can. Um, but in a lot of cases, you know, if people aren't careful about it, Google and other service providers have access to that information, and they can that can be used against you. So just keep in mind, the government is, you know, again, a very, very powerful adversary, and it is probably not 
possible for long periods of time to evade, um, to sort of evade detection, to get away with certain things without the government somehow uh, having some uh, insight into your online activities.